officially get started right so this is a part of the golden sparrow series of webinar we have three webinars that we do every month and this has been consistently been done since 2020 as we started working on the first one or the rather the first 10 days of the month we do a webinar with international and national guests just the last one that we had was with uh, dr dr anish uh, fatima pragati sharma ma'am and an liu from um, taiwan so it was three different countries we had a lovely conversation including kusum kanwar someone who's very popular in most of the golden sparrows and across the education world today so the second thing that we introduced is these stand alone webinars and in this webinars i will try to share most of the learnings i have learned in the last decade and a half traveling to hundreds of school literally hundreds of school meeting a lot of students and i thought we'll do a series on some popular educationists as much as we'll talk about education choice we'll talk about educationists in the last 10 days are dedicated to our students and we'll do some event or some program involving them the last one in january which was on 26th or rather 25th of january was around pre primary and younger kids and it was all about the republic day that we have this time we are talking about february 4th was the cancer awareness day so we have introduced the cancer awareness quiz i'll be sharing that this friday the details of it but it is for students yes most of you are welcome as observers even you can participate but this is a wonderful initiative with dr ashwini natu from tata memorial hospital pune and now bombay hospital i'll be talking about a little later so on that note once again i welcome all of you and let's get started on the webinar that we've been working out so much that i'm excited about it on how children learn the format of today's session is very simple you have to bear with me for the next 45 minutes to an hour i'll be doing most of the speaking but the chat open it's enabled you can always comment and i would like you to comment share your theories ask your questions and hopefully together we can be a part of this much bigger much larger learning process well what are we exactly going to go to today in how children learn we'll talk a lot about what it means to be a great teacher well of course the theories are all based on john hall so you will learn who this man is who is this educationist that i keep talking a lot about it and i promise you one thing in the webinars that i do maybe it is with teenagers maybe it is with uh, grown ups maybe it is on different fields one of the most important thing we'll be doing is you'll end up learning a lot about books i know as teachers you know the last thing they will want to pick up is another book after all the syllabus that we teach but yes you will learn at least enough books about this particular educationist we picked up john hall and yes thank you we will talk about the eqs and the iqs and a little more qs hopefully i'll add on to your rich vocabulary of what q stands for so most of you are familiar with who i am but a little bit of you know uh, update is important so you know where we go from i've been a patent lawyer i've been working in moscow and zurich for as much as i know about have a base about it i travel to a lot of universities that's where my work started and in between these uh, you know talking as a patent engineer and a scientist these scientists would talk about education a lot and i'll be amazed perhaps it was vodka in moscow or the cold weather i don't know but when they talk about education it would enthrall me it would amaze me until one day i decided that i need to move back to india and that is when i started my own ngo and i said education was the fulfillment of what i wanted to start with Uh, a lot of lessons i've learned with imperial college in uk or having been invited to wise one of the most prestigious uh, award function for educationists around the world i started implementing that across what i do in golden sparrow now which is an unschool and this is also an e school that we've started with in the pandemic along with a couple of my colleagues and hopefully this sustains because i see that's the way world goes forward with well i was born in kolkata i did my engineering from chennai i fell in love with a mumbai girl i am a gujarati from surat and i do some work with iit in delhi so you can call me a very very global indian citizen i travel all across india for my work in schools and hopefully someday if you invite me i'll travel to yours as well so this is a basic idea of what i've learned from some of the best educationists across the world in some of the best sessions i've attended not webinars real sessions and i thought i will condense it make a nice recipe and let you know about this in the next you know one hour that we're going to spend together right how children learn so before i actually ask how children learn how do adults learn how do you and i learn what is the process of learning about 
is learning even necessary so tell me agree or disagree 20 years of experience is usually one year of experience you know multiplied or done over and over again 20 times if you do not have your trainings and learning i think that is what experience is about sometimes i feel experience is overrated when people say i've got 20 years experience think of a railway clerk with no you know no disrespect to anybody or any profession but imagine if you're stamping your railway tickets or you're issuing tickets for 20 years is it 20 years of experience or is it one year what you did you just did it over and over 20 times what do you think do you agree disagree does it not make sense to you at least right at i always say if i get three answers on the chat i know people are awake and they are with me so can i have some answers some participation from all of you all right thank you so much saima ma'am it is something that right christina he says agree most of you shaista ma'am right so i i think this is where training and learning becomes very necessary you know yes priyanka ma'am i agree too with you what you say sometimes this is the biggest problem we've got that we don't train ourselves most of us have done a course it could be a degree and we feel that is all that we need to to go ahead in life and unfortunately that is the trend in teachers zig ziglar a very popular uh, you know guru in motivation says that sometimes we worry that if i train my people and what if they leave then he says i worry if i don't train them and they continue to stay with me well that's even more scarier that you have untrained people who are rigid people who don't want to change and i think 2020 the the last covid year taught us something if you do not change you will be extinct i like what dr sugata mitra says in these education is whose books i will share with you who who lessons i'll talk with you he says that you know so do not think the teachers technology will replace teachers he says something very interesting do not think technology will replace teachers he says teachers learning technology will replace teachers i repeat what i'm saying he says teachers learning technology will replace teachers and that is why learning is so important today all of us are literally zooming our lives i call ourselves zoom bees right we are learning technologies some of you have learned kahoot for the first time many meters you learn what a whiteboard is or you learn to make powerpoint presentation but you are learning all the time and that is important go back one year and write this down to yourself do that you know one of the best things i can tell you yes madhya ma'am tech savvy teachers are very important make your linkedin profile i i learned this the new way please update your linkedin profile if you you know i keep saying if there's just one thing you learn from in the first 10 minutes and you want to log out and say okay i'm going to have my cup of tea i'm done with you daud i would say okay you learn how to make a linkedin profile teachers are being sought after whose profiles are impressive make a small video blog write a blog just put a picture of a book you are reading a webinar that you are attending this is very very important right so wait, what next what i'm going to talk about there is a very interesting conversation it says unesco did a survey of students around and the students were from different countries and students were asked what makes a good teacher so let's find out what makes a good teacher i mean most of us have a lot of huge resumes with us i spoke about linkedin what is a good teacher and here is a little girl zaira 11 year old from mexico she says a teacher is to the student what rain is to the field wow i mean she will turn out to be philosophical i don't know she probably will be the uh, harivansh rai bachchan of her of her country but definitely something amazing isn't it teacher is to student what rain is to field well what does rain do rain allows the field to grow rain allows the field to flourish and i think a good teacher is that and trust me i love these answers because they're so innocent and they're so honest fatuma another girl 11 year old from oman says a good teacher should treat all pupils like his own children he should answer all questions even if they are stupid i love this when i read it can you can you anticipate can you think of when would this child would have said this answer when you think this child said the answer a teacher should answer all question even if they are stupid what do you think all right i'm going to private messages but i would love you all to use your direct message and let me know you know imagine you just you just scolded a child for asking a stupid question a dumb question don't we do that we show that is a stupid question please don't do that i think this girl just gave the answer when her question was asked or friend's question was asked to be dumb encourage yes 
perhaps because yes, Sadaf ma'am, when she didn't get a reply from the from the teacher, or she was not answered, Halima ma'am, or her question went answered. That's what the idea of it is. Interesting. So we are doing how children learn. I'll take two more of the quotes. These are real UNESCO quotes of what makes a teacher. Now this is Tasha, 12 year old from Uruguay. He says, to become a good teacher, you not only teach the children, but you also have to learn from them. Interesting, isn't it? I mean, these are children who are telling us what to be good teachers. Again, you know, I just wish you take a snapshot and say, am I a teacher who goes to this Zoom class every day and my students must feel that I can teach her something too? Imagine, imagine if your children are willing to share some of the stories because they believe you're willing to learn from them. I think that's the boy who's telling us from Uruguay. Or this another boy, Bongani, nine-year-old from Zimbabwe says, I like a teacher who helps me think and get answers for myself. Now, this is interesting. I think the child wanted a little more time to give an answer. Maybe it was a word problem. Maybe it was a crossword. Maybe it was spell B. And this is what we're talking about. I'll read the quote from Maria Montessori that Madhya Ma'am says, the greatest sign to success of a teacher is to be able to say that children are now working as if I don't exist. Wow. Interesting, isn't it? The teacher is not existing. And, the, and today on Zoom, it's the other way around, right? Students don't exist because most of the cameras are off. And it is like a teacher is doing a monologue. Teacher is just speaking to herself. Unfortunately, that's the case. We need to bring the child in us. Second lesson that I'm asking you to learn. Number one, remember, I asked you to prepare a LinkedIn profile. The second lesson is to be a good teacher. It is fundamental to feel like a child, to think like a child, to act like a child, and then to reason and react like a child in you. Remember that you were once a child. You know, I think as parents, it's very important to learn this. You just put changes to teenagers and you know how to deal with teenagers. Sometimes you forget that we also were teenagers. I'm sure you had your shares of mistakes and falls and mistakes and things your parents did not want you to do. We forget that. I, you know, I don't know if you watch, I, I will do these sessions and I'll share some of the wonderful videos when students don't keep the cameras on. A teacher, you know, not only scolds the child, the teacher threatens the child. I'll put you in waiting room. Come on, come on, don't do that. A child knows the technology. Child's DP may be smarter. You will not even recognize child is there or not. So feel like a child, think like a child and act like a child. So this is a basic idea of how children learn. Where did I take the idea from? Well, this is the hero of our webinar today. His name is John Holt, and he says something very, very provocative, perhaps very controversial, but something very beautiful. He says, to a very great degree, school is a place where a child learns to be stupid. Oh, wow. I mean, this is a book he's written called Escape from Childhood, and I promise you, I'll teach you enough books by John Holt. You can put that on your resume. I attend a webinar. And I know enough books by this educationist who wrote these books. His book, Escape from Childhood, says school is a place. And I, of course, don't agree with him. I know I went to school and I came out really well, but I'm not so stupid. But sometimes we do make our children numb. We do make our children less intelligent or creative before they enter the school. My another favorite educationist, Ken Robinson, says that a child goes to school as a question mark, but ends up the school as a full stop. You know, you have so many questions, you have so many things to share and ask. Unfortunately, the teacher says, don't ask now, don't ask those stupid questions, keep quiet, don't talk, don't collaborate, don't listen to each other, don't share, and the companies want exactly the opposite of this. So John Holt may not be completely wrong when he says schools really need to innovate and improve themselves. What is this webinar all about? Well, after 15 minutes, you want me to tell you that? Right, yes. This webinar is based on these two fundamental books by the American educationist, John Holt. I told you one more book before, right? The, the idea escape from childhood, but John Holt has been very, very powerful. I mean, if you are an educator, a teacher, and you've not heard about these books, don't worry. I'm not gonna tell you stupid. I'm telling you the time to learn about this is now. You know, as teachers, you must know what you're learning about. This How Children Fail was the first book and How Children Learn was the second one. If you've been following my little messages or Facebook posts in the group itself, these books were written 60 years from today. The first book was written in 1964, How Children Fail. 
And the second book was written after three years, around 1967. And I'm sure most of you were not born there. At least I'm not as old as some of you. I was not born then. But the strange part of it is the book are even relevant today. Even if you read the book, you will find that it is a 21st century conversation author John Holt is having with us. So I've taken a lot of quotes from the book and I've compressed this into a proper webinar so that you come out learning a lot about children, how they fail and how they learn. And our title of the webinar is from one of the book, How Children Learn. Fair enough. Are we going good? Can I have a bit of thumbs up? Is, there, is it fine? Anybody here who learned about John Hall for the first time, you can say a yes in the group so I know that you're with me. At least if you're enjoying the session, if you're learning something new, thank you so much. All right. So I'm making you an educator, hopefully. Thank you so much. It's good to see that we are learning about an educationist who is very interesting. All of you, thank you. There's so many of you that you're actually interacting with me. This is wonderful. Let me tell you a brilliant, wonderful story. Some of you must have heard about it, but it's worth repeating it. You know, Mrs. Thompson had the first class, and this was a new fifth grader that she was teaching. And Mrs. Monson went to the class, and she stood in front of all her children in grade five. These are usually, if you add the CBSC rule, 10 year old, 9 and 10 and 11 year old, and she told them a lie. A lie every teacher says. What's that lie? I love all of you equally. Well, that's not true, right? You, you, as a teacher, you know that you have your favorites. But the joy of a teacher is not to let the child know that others are favorite and they are not. So Mrs. Teacher, Mrs. Thompson had to tell them that I love all of you equally. Unfortunately, the lie was so evident because right in front bench, sitting slumped in the seat was a boy named Teddy Stallard. And Mrs. Thompson had one of the worst time grading Teddy. The moment she'll get Teddy's paper, she will know exactly what to do. She will take a red pen and start crossing his answers because that is what Teddy was doing. He was always late in class. His answers were not done. His sheets were messy. His clothes were dirty. He was smelling. He would sometimes sleep in the class. And Mrs. Thompson, despite telling that I love all the children, he, she never, never, ever fa favored Teddy. Now, this school had a very interesting concept. And these are things that we learned from the stories as well. The school, at the end of midterm, had to do something very important. They had to go through the previous record of the child and previous comment by the teachers. And exactly, that's what Mrs. Thompson did. She did everybody's report. She read everybody's report. Maybe she read Jack's report, and she read about Tom's report, and everyone else except Teddy's report. She hated to read it, but because it was a part of her work, she took the last report that was available, and that was Teddy's report. To a shock, to a surprise, to her dismay and amusement, her grade one teacher's report was this. Teddy is a bright boy with ready laugh. His work is neat. He has good manners. He's a joy to be around. Mrs. Thompson scratched and returned. And she looked at it. Am I reading the right report? But that was it. That is what Teddy's grade one teacher has written. Teddy's grade two teacher wrote something very similar. Teddy is an excellent student, well liked by his classmates but he's troubled because of his mother's terminal illness and life at home must be a struggle. Now, do you see the perspective? The paradigm is shifting now. Mrs. Thompson started realizing this was not the Teddy who has come to grade five. Grade three report now has something similar. You know, Teddy's mother's death must be hard on him. You know, he tries to do his best, but his father doesn't show any interest in him. Now, do you realize the background of this young, bright boy who did not have a mother to support and not a father so much of interest and he's losing out on? Teddy's fourth grade, Teddy is withdrawn, doesn't show many in, much interest. He, has, he hasn't had many friends and sometimes sleep in the club. Now, Mrs. Thompson looked at Teddy in a very different way. This boy who was a bright joy in the class is not the same child after the death of his mother. And how many children you have in your classes, in your online sessions, whose family history you do not know. You don't know if the parents are divorced. You don't know if the father is somewhere in the Gulf and he's stuck. And you don't know if they're going through financial problems. You don't know in Mumbai, especially our houses are so small. If I shout, there is a Zoom video of my daughter and she and her teacher can hear. I do not know so many things about my children. And I'm taking class for the last one year. And this is the issue that we have got. Isn't it? Now, something strange happens. It was, remember, it was mid-year, I said, 
And in Christmas, the school had a, a you know had a tradition of giving gifts to the teachers, and the children bought the best gifts, all neatly wrapped up, lovely glitter paper ribbon, and they were steady. Who also bought a gift, but it was in a grocery bag, a crumbled brown bag. And what was it? When Mrs. Thompson opened up, it was a broken bracelet. Some of the stones, the gems were missing in it. And then there was a half bottle of perfume. The kids in the class started laughing. And Mrs. Teddy, Mrs. Thompson did something amazing to Teddy. All she did is she wore the bracelet, she put the perfume, and she said, Teddy, this is wonderful. I love it. That evening, Teddy stayed after class and he waited for everybody to leave. And he said, Mrs. Thompson, today you smell just like my mother used to do. This is all he said. This is all Teddy said, and he left. Mrs. Thompson said, I cried for an hour that day. I realized I was not teaching the child, I was teaching the subject. And this is what we do. As teachers, are you teaching the curriculum or are you teaching the child? How can you teach a child, my friend, when you don't even know who you are teaching? You don't know their family, you don't know much about them, you're just teaching a bunch of Zoom cameras, perhaps. Teddy kept in touch with Mrs. Thompson, Letters kept coming, although Teddy was expelled in one of the sessions, uh, you know, one of the, one of the blogs I read, but Teddy kept saying that, Mrs. Thompson, I am studying, I'm working hard, it's very tough, but I've actually enrolled myself in a doctor's degree, and after a few years, the letters stopped. Mrs. Thompson has become old now, and years passed away until she received a letter, a letter which says, hello, Mrs. Thompson, I have seen a lot of teachers, but trust me, you're still the best teacher I ever had in my life. My name has become just a little longer than it was. Today, I am Dr. Theodore F. Stoddard, MD. He said that all because of the little one day you told me I can do something, Mrs. Thompson, I am, you taught me about it. And Mrs. Thompson replied to Teddy, Mrs. Teddy, you did not teach me. Actually, you taught me every child is teachable. Only teacher has to learn how to teach them. It seems Many years later, Teddy sent Mrs. Thompson an invitation to his wedding. And he said, Mrs. Thompson, you know, I would like you to be a part of my wedding as where my mother would have been. And this is an amazing, Mrs. Thompson wore the same bracelet and she applied the same perfume that Teddy had given her years ago. How children learn is something that we, we have ingrained ourselves in. Sometimes these are human touches that your child needs. Little call, little sharing, a joke, being funny, being yourself is what a child needs. I don't know how you think you are touched by this story, but every time I have read the story of this young boy, Teddy, I think of my children who will become lawyers and doctors or something else, somebody who they have self-respect in, and I want to be the teacher who brings that self-respect in. John Hoyt again, and he says something very interesting, very compelling, very powerful. He says that we destroy the love of learning in children, which is so strong when they're small, by encouraging, compelling them to work for petty and contemptible rewards, small rewards. You know, he's writing in his book, How Children Fail, that gold stars, the papers mark 100, or A's on report card for the ignoble satisfaction of feeling that they're better than someone else. Oh, wow. Thank you so much, Madhya, ma'am. So another quote by Charles Clooney, I am not what you think I am. I am what you think I am. You know, what I think I am, and I think it's right. You know, I think every child has a self-esteem and self-worth in them. What lesson I'm letting you understand from Teddy's story and what is John Hall telling us in his book, How Children Fail, is we are you know, setting up, we are setting them up for failure by encouraging petty competition. You know, sometimes the marks that we give them. I was doing a session with my teachers in hub school today morning, and I said, be generous with your marks, especially online. I mean, nobody's taking those marks away from you. You're not being penalized or charged for giving the marks that you'll be giving to your students. Allow them. Give them the freedom to make mistakes. If they copy and if somebody blurts an answer out by mistake, laugh it out. Don't ostracize the child. Don't scold the child. Don't humiliate the child, especially online when you can't see the child. So this is my learning, one of the learning. And again, I'll let you reflect on what you learn. The book that says, John Hall says, How Children Fail, he says so beautifully, I just summarize in one point, stop the stars you give them. 
oh, well, give them stars, whatever, but more importantly, give them feedback. Ken Blankard, another author, who is the author of the book, One Minute Manager, he says, feedback is the breakfast of the champion. I don't know what you had for breakfast, idli, poha, omelet, or, or, or museli, anything that you had, but trust me, he says, breakfast is the feedback, is the breakfast of the champion. When is the last time you gave proper feedback to your children after the exam, after the performance, after some sessions you took? Trust me, this will build up the self-esteem and their trust. So here we are. We're almost at the, you know, just the brink of it. We are learning a lot of things from John. And I think, you know, late John would be proud if you can implement some of the strategies that I'm talking about. Any, any comment on Mrs. Thompson? Any suggestion? Any question? Anything that, to, that you were, you know, touched by? I would love to hear at least three comments before I go ahead. Will you be stopping the stars and A's and hundreds out of hundreds now? And will you be focusing on your feedback? I hope so. Thank you so much, Simon, ma'am. Yes, good to see you all. You know, be participative, be learning. And that's your feedback. Yes, Kayuri, ma'am. Thank you. Even a yes is a feedback for me. It pushes me to go ahead. And I, I always tell you, students will answer if teacher gives a little more time. I've only got two responses. I will wait for three responses. So hold on, I'm waiting myself. Right, thank you, Shaista, ma'am, and Christina, ma'am. It is a hard touching story. And you see, the moment I waited, you gave me a response, Nazima, ma'am. Even with a smiley, it's wonderful. Thank you. Right. Yes, Aisha, ma'am, it's absolutely about the heart and the mind. Perhaps I'm a mindset coach. I should change myself to a heart set coach now after your comment. Right, let's go on to our next conversation on this. This, this webinar. And this is more about a question to you. Define a curriculum. What's a curriculum, by the way? And I asked you in the, in the, in the promo messages I was sending you, I said that, right, what's the difference between a curriculum and a syllabus? Are they the same? Which is bigger? Which is smaller? What do you think? Oh, thank you, uh, Hadijit, ma'am. I'm, I'm so glad you're here, that you're learning as well. Because we do this a lot of time, right? We confuse between the word curriculum and syllabus. Are they the same? What's the difference between the two? Go ahead. And don't worry, I'll not penalize you for wrong answers. The only wrong questions, isn't it? You will give an answer which is for a different question I did not ask. So what's the curriculum or syllabus is bigger? All right, okay, that's interesting. So, so what else? What else are we getting into? Okay, a couple of more responses from you. What is a curriculum? And don't worry, I'll not drag this too much. I'll, I'll make sure my curriculum is short for you. Okay, Christina, ma'am. Curriculum is the one that is planned, especially keeping children in mind. I love that part. Now I'm seeing that children are the focus of our learning at least. Remember what we said, teach the child, not the curriculum. Curriculum is a broader aspect. All right, Kayuri, ma'am. Being age appropriate. Oh, that's nice. You're throwing a lot of vocabulary to me now. Curriculum should be followed in every school. Curriculum are the goal. Syllabus is the means. Wow, that's nice. I like that, Aisha, ma'am. Now I know I'm talking to a principal. Syllabus is the goal. Curriculum is the vision. Wow, Awatis, ma'am. She is a wonderful mental health practitioner, a nutritionist. That's nice to hear you. Good, good. I like the way you're defining a curriculum. Well, let me go a little back. Yes, Fatima, ma'am, from Kalimpong. Curriculum acts as a guide. It's wonderful. Uh, something that teacher rushes to finish. I love her answer. Syllabus is something teacher rushes to finish, right? Finish, right? Okay, let's, let's take this into a little, yes, yes. Now I'm getting answer from Bangalore, perhaps. Akila, ma'am, curriculum is a vision. Perhaps you are right. Curriculum is a much, much, much broader term. Curriculum is everything. For example, when I say a math curriculum for a child, it will involve from the multiplication right to the calculus. But a syllabus is something, hold on, hold on. Now, now you, 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 you need to uh, focus on a syllabus is a small part of the larger curriculum. So that is it. Syllabus is a subset, curriculum is a main set. Hope we don't get it wrong anymore. Curriculum actually comes from a Latin word which means curry key. Curry, not the curry that you have with the spices on. Curry essentially is something they used to have with the horses running, a chariot race. Anyone who's heard or watched about Ben Hur, this iconic movie, right? Uh, Charles Heston, I believe. The chariot race, what does a race do? A chariot race is a race with horses. In fact, in Mumbai, we have the Mahalakshmi race course, perhaps, where there are hurdles for a horse. A curriculum are those hurdles that you put for a child to finish those races. Well, unfortunately, we, we've taken race very, race very literally, and a child are in that race. I'm not talking about that race. 
but something an objective to complete. So I come back to you again. Syllabus is a part of that curriculum. Let's say you're teaching geography, okay? And in geography, I'm teaching about mountains. So my curriculum is mountain, everything about mountain. It could be the world's largest mountain peak to the mountain ranges from Andes and Atlas and Kilimanjaro and the Alps and the Himalayas and about mountains, what a mountain made of, so rocks come into it. So curriculum is a lot, but a syllabus could be just one portion of it, let's say volcanoes, which is a part of mountain. And I've got three part of volcano. I'm teaching a lot of geography now, right? But there is a dormant volcano, an extinct volcano, uh, active volcano, that's the syllabus. The curriculum involves everything. So what am I teaching you here is when you teach the curriculum, and this I've borrowed a concept that IB teaches, very inter interesting, but something you all can adopt. There's no shame in learning from different curriculums, different boards across the world. And this is the technical part, unfortunately, but another book of John Holt called Learning All the Time. So this is the fourth book of John that we are learning about, where we are saying curriculum has to have these three elements. When you teach a syllabus, which is a portion of a curriculum, make sure you teach these three things. What is word teaching? How we teach? And how do we know a child is learning? Well, what is this? Can I make it easier? Yeah, this is the easy of it. What, how, and whether. In IB term, it is the written curriculum, the taught curriculum, and the SS curriculum. Something that is the curriculum, the syllabus is the written curriculum. Unfortunately, that's the only part we think about. But how do you teach is the pedagogy. How you teach? Are you making it interesting through quiz? Are you making it interesting through PowerPoint? Are you making a video presentation? Is there a debate involved? How? And whether a child is learning is the assessment, essays, essays, unit tests, surprise tests that the students give us more surprise when they don't give all the answers, but the fault lies with us. So hopefully in between, I squeeze a little technical aspect, but you all are teachers and you'll bear that with me. But this is the difference between a curriculum and a syllabus. Sometime later, I will run through the difference between letters and alphabet, but not for today, when we do the English part. This is the fifth book of John that I'm going to teach you today. Teach your own. John Holt is credited with the concept of homeschooling, by the way. The word unschooling that I use so, so, so much in Golden Sparrow is actually coined by John Holt. He says, the true test of character is not how much we know how to do, but how we behave when we don't know what to do. Kind of confusing, but trust me, when you don't know how you pretend, how you convey is the test of character according to John Holt. Well, a lot of it. Thank you, Shushma, ma'am, for saying concepts with the learning outcome. Absolutely. On the dot, beautiful. I didn't want to add a lot of learning outcomes out here. But yes, this is what a curriculum is. I repeat what I said. This is one of my favorite quotes, which says, children do not care how much you know unless they know how much you care. I repeat again. Children do not care how much you know unless they know how much you care. Show that care. Teach the child, not the curriculum. Teach the child. Tell the child about yourself. I don't know, when was the last time you shared your fears, your insecurities, your challenges? Do the children know, do you take what mobile are you using? They're interested. Do the children know about your date of birth? Do the children know about what dish you made? Show them a picture, take a photograph. They should know you and then they will learn from you. That is what a good teacher is. Today's teachers are mentors, role, coaches, facilitators, and that is what we're talking about. Shaista ma'am, I'll read what you said very nicely. We should also teach our children not just how to celebrate success, absolutely, but also how to handle failure. Since you mentioned that, let's go to the story of failure. Very nicely. So let's take up this failure story. I don't know if you predicted what I'm going to do, but this is one of the second case studies that I'm going to do. And we are almost, almost there. We, if anyone wants to have your cup of tea, trust me, we have 10 more minutes to end. And then we'll have some question answers and a little bit of sharing of knowledge. My case study is about Lee. Li is actual real name of the first Chinese woman, woman actually it should be, to win a Grand Slam in tennis. She won the Australian Open. But Li has never ever won any slam after that win. Li won the first Grand Slam, but after that she never won anything. Li been training since the age of seven. And the sports training in China, well, not my best friend right now, not good neighbors to us, but hopefully we'll make a, amend a relationship with them but I'll still not download TikTok now, is China's sports training is rigorous. Players are allowed to concentrate on the game rather than study. So China allows that freedom. And trust me, China is one of the leading countries in Olympic medals, right? So what could be the reason for Lee's failure? 
I'll give, I'll, I'll summarize what I asked you. A long case study. This girl won her Grand Slam. First Chinese woman to do so. But after that, she's never won any of the Grand Slam. China has given all the facility. She's got the best coaches. She's got good nutritionists. She's got good facilities. But still, Lee has not made up to her first success. My question to all of you is: What could be the possible reason? Remember, we're learning John Hall. How children learn. Let's understand this. And the clue already is from Shai Sam. I'm already mentioned a little earlier. Okay. Thank you so much, Shai Sam. Because she wanted to win the first in major two. All right. Perhaps she did win the major one. That is Australian Open. But after that, she never won anything. What could be the reason? Okay. I I trust your answer very well. I give me two more answers. I always say I would want at least three answers to go ahead. So I'm stuck if your answers don't come. Okay, Priyanka Ma'am says she became too complacent. Aisha Ma'am, very correct, very close to both of you. Pressure to top after the loss, the second one she could not make a comeback. Okay, Nikita Ma'am, she couldn't deal with failure. I love your answers. I really, really enjoy what you're saying, and I think you know what you're speaking about. Okay, stress, uh, task was accomplished. Okay, that is all she wanted to do. She never unlearned or should not learn how to uh, learn. Okay, interesting. I like the way you put the title of the seminar in this. You all are right. I'll give you a different perspective. Maybe someday I'll do an entire webinar on failure. You know, if ever, if ever you met anybody who went to KBC, where Mr. Amitabh Bachchan, the big B, is there, you know, you have two kind of emotions going through. Emotion one is I want to win big, but emotion two is I don't want to lose small and be humiliated. Which is a stronger emotion? I want to win one crore or seven crore, whatever the case is. Oh, I'm sorry if there are people from international audience. It's like a lot of million out there. I don't know how many zeros in crores right now. I haven't got it yet, right? Or the embarrassment of losing and not winning anything. What do you think? What is much bigger emotion right now going through? Okay, go ahead. So is it the joy of winning or the fear of failure? And I think what you said is very correct. Absolutely, Sumaya, ma'am, and Priyanka, ma'am, and rest of you. It's the fear of failure that is so high, and I think that is what we put in our children. The joy of winning is rather something ingrained. We want to win, but sometimes we hate to lose. We are afraid to lose, and that is what John Hall says in his book How to Fail and How to Learn. That is the idea. For many years, John says, I've been asking myself why intelligent children act unintelligently at school. Think about it. Intelligent children. Act unintelligently at school, and he says the answer is so simple because they are scared. They are scared. We are making scared kids at school, and I'm saying a school as any institution because absolutely, Shahid Ahmed, fear retards growth. Sometimes the fear of failure is much bigger. You know, when you set a question paper, and this is honest question to all my teachers, what is the ingrained thinking in you? I'm going to make a paper that the children can crack. They should ace it up, or I'm going to make a paper that will be difficult and hard. Think about it. As teachers, we are taking the joy away. We are, we are okay. That's nice. You stop enjoying when you're good at. Remember the mindset, and hopefully someday I'll do Carol do it. We actually make them fear because of the way we approach it. It's all mental. Your approach of paper saying, "I want my child to crack the entire paper. I'm okay with it. I want him to answer all the quiz questions. I prepare my quizzes with the hint that every question should be answered." That's what John is saying. He's saying we have two problems. Number one, number one, to stop children from being afraid and to break them the bad habit that have been ingrained through these fears. You know, I ask children, "What are you afraid of?" You know, in my interaction with young children, I had this funny incident where I said, "What are you afraid of?" And the children said, "I'm afraid of, you know, cockroaches, lizards, this, that." And I said, "Are you afraid of your mom?" And the kid says, "No, we are not afraid of mom." I said, "Dad is afraid of mom." Right? And then suddenly, I realized the children were happy, but they said, "We are afraid of a teacher." And and why were they afraid of the teachers? Is because you have the power to take something away from them. You have the power to take away what actually belongs there, the joy of learning. Trust me, this is how children fail because you take away the fear of allowing them to fail. This girl, she did not succeed. There is an entire case study on Lee because she was too tempted to win again. 
the pressure an entire nation now the only nation bigger than ours is china right imagine over a billion people wants lee to win and lee has this pressure because now she cannot express herself she cannot have the joy of losing or the the fear of failing is so big lee bucked under the pressure she never won so afraid of being questioned for a mistake absolutely so please you know one of the things we actually don't allow teachers to do is use red pens to mark why why is red so bad i had an institution called red camel so perhaps we need to change our thinking and that is what i think i learned from john's episode this is my last thing today and i hope we've done justice to a little learning that we have done how do you judge a great teacher are you a good teacher do you want to be a great teacher well i think most of us are modest enough to say that we are not great teachers but give me a yardstick give me a bar give me something i can put myself on so i'm giving you task no i'm not giving you task task is an acronym hopefully you measure yourself as this and in some point you will become a teacher remember the first who answers the kids said a teacher is like rain to the field you will become that rain you will become that shower of joy shower of freshness a child will dance under you when they you know they will be clean you will be pure this is task i leave you with what is task for why do i tell you all the answers that's no fun why not i ask you to guess guess anything what does t stand for a stand for s stand for k stand for come on give me a little joy as well all right please tell me what does t a s k stand for thank you so much aisha ma'am well beautiful is not an adjective my wife uses for me but i hope the training is beautiful right shaista ma'am says t for training i like that tell me what else could t stand for and we'll do one at a time then okay talented you are talented sumaya ma'am but my t is a different one okay interesting i'll take one more oh i love the answers thinking target i i'm i'm, I'm actually amazed at what you're talking about taking care wonderful let's take care of t right now p is something that is over hyped technique teamwork oh, wow that's so thoughtful of you i am p stands for talent john hall last book i'm i'm discussing of john is a book on home schooling by the way this is teach your own well t has to be for teaching of course but t is for talent sometimes talent is we always have believed talent is ingrained isn't it we believe that either you're born talented or you are not born talented every teacher trust me actually grows up with the talent and in the book john says that talent is something will always be, be you know better and he give an example he says that talent another word for talent is gifted he says people who are gifted are and if they are lazy people who are hard working and not gifted will always exceed and the case in scenario is of cristiano ronaldo you know i know most of you uh, you know the the hero he is a supremely talented athlete in fact virat kohli always uses his as an example he did, he said there are many more talented people with me but the kind of hard work cristiano ronaldo has a thread mill inside the inside the swimming pool well he has so much money he can afford to put a thread mill in the swimming pool and he starts doing his, his exercises there he says because of that my thighs have become good well that's what hard work is so talent is overrated but what is important i gave you the a1 go talent is overrated but what is important is your hard work and your talent trust me you are a powerful force to reckon all the words you told me you are wonderful after that a well i gave you the a so i'll go take the a the next one is attitude say so much a good teacher must have attitude of politeness openness patience oh patience so much you know your voice how do you speak i i like the word about affection and acceptance but the attitude is willingness to learn are you not willing to learn being a team player this is as they say your attitude determines your altitude you know how how high you go is how far you can spread yourself and attitude is that are you a teacher the students love to be part of it well you are going ahead so let me quickly go to s t a s k s stands for sympathy okay most of you have sympathy for teachers or students i don't know success i like the word success skill all right avatar sam i think i'll take skill saima ma'am new i think that's the word i was looking for today is the word skill and i gave you key away what skills do you need as teachers well my skill is lesson planning i trust me one of the skills that teacher needs is to learn about books today you will learn about seven books probably be proud of yourself write that in your linkedin profile 
you must learn what pedagogy is. You learn about rubrics. You learn how to communicate. You learn about assessment techniques. And hopefully next month we'll do something on Zoom taxonomy. You you know it's not just the edge that we've done. Let's put those skills to use. Life skills. You know critical thinking, uh, decision making, problem solving, interpersonal skills. You need those skills. So we have got T A S K. Of course, K is knowledge. Well, don't come unprepared. You must know what you're speaking about. The knowledge of subject, the knowledge of child psychology. Trust me, my wife is a psychologist, and she all does all experiments on me. I am a guinea pig, but she's doing good because of that, right? Principles of learning. This is where your knowledge comes from. You can be all of this, and you don't have the knowledge. Then again, you go back to zero. That is what a task is all about. So here's one last game for you before I, I let you answer some questions, and I share a little bit of upschooling. This is what IQ is. So today in the 21st century, our students are 21st century learners. Are you and I 21st century teachers? Perhaps we are still stuck to 18th, 15th, 16th century, or at least 20th century. So IQ is not enough, isn't it? And IQ stands for. So what is the new Q that you require? IQ stands for intelligent quotient. You know that, right? So what is the new Q that we require? Okay, go ahead. Tell me. I want some more. It's an easy one. Well, you all said EQ, but that's not true. You require something called PQ. There was an experiment done in Japan where they hired a lot of Japanese for the car automobile factory, and they saw that people were very intelligent, but they never had any passion. They did not have any belonging, and they said, "Now we'll start hiring people who also have PQ, and not PK, not that movie. PQ is passion quotient." But after some time, they realized PQ was not enough. So, what is the next cue they thought was important? Please go ahead and tell me. What is the next cue was very important? You told me the answer, didn't you? Go ahead, please tell me. Participate. Right, right, right. I know. And once you know, they said it was the EQ, not the EQ. Come on, it was the attitude question. I just taught you about attitude. So they said, despite the passion, they were very intelligent. They were passionate, but they were lazy, procrastinators. And they said, no, no, no. We want people with good attitude also. Yet they found that attitude was not enough. They wanted something else. What is the next cue they wanted? What's the next cue? I'll give you the cue. You know, I love this. I love this part. This is actually an experiment. Go back and watch this. Only this part of it. When you gave three wrong answers, and I said it's not EQ. When the EQ came, none of you gave the answer. You were so delusional. You gave us so easily. EQ was coming at some point, but I always do this with teachers, and I realize after two wrong answers, they don't give you, they don't give the right answers. The teachers decide, oh, I've done enough. I will not tell EQ. They realize emotionally, the the Japanese were not smart enough. They want the EQ, the emotional quotient, and finally they realize all these cues are very important. One very important cue that most of us needed in today's time so much about this faithless society is what cue am I talking about? But this is not John. But this is some of the research I did. It's the SQ, right? The spiritual quotient. Trust me, today you need the inner willpower. You know, whatever. I'm not asking about a DT. I'm talking about your inner faith, your faith in yourself, your faith in your abilities, your faith in being good is the SQ I'm talking about. Not giving up so easily. Not becoming a shushan. Not trying to, you know, today mental health is so essential. I think SQ is all about that health. So this is a small chart. I leave you with IQ, PQ, AQ, EQ, SQ. These are the cues. All of you, you must have. This is what I'm leaving you with. That is where a task is very important. You know, you you must realize that it's not the F that you give to your students that is important. It's the F. When a teacher gives an F to the child, there is an F on the teacher's report card also. So you decide. Your child is A plus. You are an A plus teacher. Your child is a C negative. You are a C negative teacher. Your reflection is in the child, so you decide what your child scores. I think we need to upgrade ourselves. How children learn? The children learn when a teacher becomes a learner, a facilitator. A teacher has the task factor. I think we are having looking some amazing examples from Steve Jobs to Elon Musk. Task is important. Your talent, your skills, your attitude, your knowledge. What are you looking for? I think I leave you with this task. Probably it's not the right mirror. But I want you to look into the mirror and say, what are my task factors? How I am becoming better than every day? Am I using the same technique I used 
in my regular offline classes in and online classes will i go back to becoming the old teacher when the pandemic ends hopefully soon and i go back to my classes or i am a changed teacher the pandemic as much as it's taken something away has taught me more this is what how children learn not just children we learn as well a quick recap of what i just taught you today as a teacher i hope you enjoyed and learned well we spoke about the two primary books of john hall how children fail how children learn around this we spoke about one of the most powerful story of this young boy teddy who becomes dr theodore and how a teacher changed because of one little interaction of going back and knowing the child we said stop giving stars and start giving feedback because feedback are the breakfast of the champion and then we ended up talking about another book of john learning all the time what is curriculum the the what why and how of the curriculum we spoke about this wonderful girl hopefully she'll win a, a a medal or a grand slam soon when the pressure is not on lee and then we spoke about the task factor and is iq enough no it's not enough in today's time i hope you enjoy thank you so much for your messages all of you you're welcome to share your views your answers your suggestions we have a two more minutes session but until then you can reach me on my email the the group is there you can share your messages your comments anyway i hope we learn something today and we hope that your children will thank me when you become a task teacher thank you everybody thank you so much any questions any suggestions i'm here for your questions and suggestions and we'll take a minute more since you bore with me for so long and since you were with me for so long allow me to introduce a concept that i've been working on in the pandemic and hopefully we can take this concept in further any questions i'll take those questions at the end of it you can always put your questions to me a little later uh, some of you know me i'm very particular with opening and closing on time so i respect your time and thank you so much all of you aisha ma'am nazima ma'am priyanka ma'am shishma ma'am all of you thank so many of you yes the slides will be yours and that's something i've learned to share i'll put the slides in the in the same group the creative classroom and you can download it talk about it share it absolutely yours will be wonderful this is a little concept i wanted to share you about the new age learning at hub school well in the pandemic we learned something that learning cannot stop schools may have stopped and we said what is the new learning so this is what the new learning was we've said that lots of research have come in that can children learn online well today in the pandemic especially in pre primary and younger classes yes it is possible but online learning is really difficult in terms of you can't replicate a real learning there but you can create engaging classes it's also better there is no transport there is issues with hygiene at least for mothers out there you are not talking about the uh, the the lunch boxes yes it's, it's economical and at least now for the next 6 months you will maintain enough social distancing you don't have to wear a mask in front of zoom we teach the cambridge learning outcomes in golden sparrow online e school and you can take a snapshot of this particular shot that's christina ma'am out there you have my number as well reach out for any child who wants to learn this is a small concept we started and this year will be my first batch with nios that is my de facto classes in hub schooling uh, we have we have got an entire uh, math curriculum science so stem english as a language we also have life skills sdg arts social studies so the idea is is a student led curriculum a proper program that starts with the colors of the rainbow we have pre primary led very nicely with three, three wonderful teachers we got students from pune chennai delhi and that's how the way the classes are done then the classes 1 2 are in a group called violet and you can see the entire class 9th and 10th will be yellow soon and they will appear for the first board exam this year 12 sessions per month that is 4 days a week it's an nis a uh, ministry of hrd recognized the government of india board you have lot of guest visits quizzes happening engaging program 48 classes in a month is what we are going for what can you do well you can reach out to us as a as a teacher hopefully we have a great team of teachers teaching you can be a parent you can take up a program and this is the only thing here the numbers for you to make a note of take a snapshot take a photograph and reach out to us this is golden sparrow e school that i'll be you know, i'm very excited that this is a new age learning hopefully elon musk will take a lot of students on of this and this is where we are so i promise you only 3 minutes of this it is a proper e school 
And if you're interested to create your own hubs, it could be somewhere else, then you can let us know and we'll help you create those hubs in your respective cities. I think we are done with our session. Any question, any comments, I'll read some of the questions that came so beautifully before, and we will share the presentation and the slides as well. All right, there was a question that you didn't understand how the talking teacher is the enemy. Well, absolutely, uh, it, the, it, it's Vivo, so I don't know who you are, but what John Hall says, is today the concept of teacher on the stage, right? Or teacher as a stage. If you are only in a preaching mode, then it is the enemy of learning. A teacher cannot bore a child. Today, I do not know if your earphones are on and you're sleeping because that's how learning happens. A teacher needs to be engaged. That is the concept. And thank you for building them up. Yes, there was a comment of a talking teacher and I hope I clarified that. Thank you, Khadija, ma'am, uh, about there is more to curriculum. And institutions must support these ideas. Can a single thought of a teacher work? Absolutely agree with you. It's a community building, and that is what teachers are all about. And hopefully, we will work that out. Thank you so much for your comments, for your suggestions. Hope to see you again. And I will inform you in the group about the cancer awareness quiz, which is for the students that's happening next week. Until then, goodbye, good luck, and thank you for attending. Bye bye, everybody. Bye bye.